we'll start our next topic which is the sexual reproduction in plants we have already discussed about the asexual reproduction the methods of asexual reproduction we have finished and now we'll see the sexual reproduction in plants usually it takes place with the help of flowers so we all know that there are so many flowers they are really very beautiful and colored flowers so in angiosperms angiosperms are the plants which have the flowers the flowering plants are called as angiosperms children you can just underline oh one second you can underline it the flowering plants are known as angiosperms the flowering plants are known as angiosperms angiosperms flowers are obtained from only from the flowering plants flower we can get the flowers only from the flowering plants there are flowering plants and non flowering plants also like crotons yesterday we have seen one spider plant do it have flowers no it won't have some plants they don't have flowers so there are few plants which are flowering so these flowering plants are known as angiosperms in the plant kingdom so the flower have the reproductive organs the reproductive organs of flower are calyx corolla and rhesium gynecium so these are the parts reproductive parts of flower so as uh, the typical flower shows the following four layers which are known as whorls of a flower so the parts different parts of the flower are calyx corolla and rhesium and gynecium so if we see coming to calyx children calyx is the outermost green whorl in a flower which is the outermost at the bottom you can find this calyx the outermost green whorl in a flower i'll just show you the picture one second i'll erase it off i'll show you the picture of the flower so here you can see here you can see the flower so even you can see the flower the picture of the flower in your book also you can have this picture in your book also so now if you see this calyx if you see first one calyx it is the outermost green whorl in a flower calyx is made up of sepals calyx protects the flower in the bud condition it protects the flower when it is in the bud condition okay so the outermost green color layer when the flower is in the form of a bud then it protects the green color layer of the flower it protects the bud it protects the flower before it is bloomed and now coming to next part corolla so this corolla is a second whorl in a flower it is made up of petals so corolla is made up of it is a second whorl and it is made up of petals petals are the these are the petals if you see in the flower you can see the pink color petals of the flower so these are the petals and this is the sepal if you can see the differentiation differentiation and here you can see ovary different parts stigma style ovary so we'll study further in this lesson what are the different functions of all these parts okay so these are the reproductive parts this ovule stamen pollen tube these are the reproductive organs inside the flower we'll have a closer look of all these as we go in detail of in this lesson so if you see this corolla this corolla is nothing but the petals of flower they are very attractive 
they are they have so many colors of petals and of flowers so the colorful uh, color of these petals and the fragrant uh, fragrance which comes out of this flower it is to attract the insects for pollination so when these insects they come and they just sit on these flowers they the they attach this you can see this pollen you can see this pollen from this pollen tube the small pollen grains you can see the small pollen grains so they attach to the uh, wings or the legs of the uh, flies or butterflies or whatever insect which comes and sits on this flower honey bees so these pollen grains they stick to the uh, parts of the insects they stick to the parts of uh, either it might be any insect either it might be a bee a honey bee a wasp or any insect they just stick on their wings or legs so they transfer this pollen grains to another flower when it when this insect they sit on another flower they just transfer these for they just transfer these pollen grains to another flower where the cross pollination or the reproduction takes place you can see in this picture the bee which sat on this flower it is going on and sitting on another flower and it is transferring the pollen grains from flower to another flower you can see this sexual reproduction takes place in flowers pollination has to takes place first from so this bee will be the carrier this bee will be the bee will be responsible for the pollination it carries the pollen grains from one flower to another the transfer of pollen from anther to stigma anther to stigma these are the reproductive organs anther stigma so there will be a transfer and the pollination takes place and like this the reproduction takes place and even in this picture also you can see you can see it clearly the pollen from stamens sticks to the bee and when it visits on another flower then it transfers like this the cross pollination takes place the transfer of pollen from another anther to stigma in flowers of different plants but same species is known as cross pollination self pollination and cross pollination are two types of pollination which takes place so here there is a difference between the sexual reproduction children we'll see in detail about that so we'll see the different parts we have seen calyx corolla and now we'll see andrisium and ganesium so these are the parts of flower these are the parts of flower and now flower. we'll see uh, andrisium first we'll see andrisium andrisium is the third roll in a flower it is the third roll in a flower it consists of stamens stamens are made up of three parts namely anther stalk and connective tissue stamens are made up of three parts i'll show you the picture of the flower stamens are made of three parts you can see in this picture stamen are made up of anther filament you can see in the picture anther stalk and connective tissue so they are connected here and now anther consists of pollen grains pollen grain contain male gametes so here anther consists of pollen grain where is the anther here you can see in this picture anther is connected to the filament anther is connected to the filament it is the male part okay and now coming to stalk stalk is the lining tube like stalk by a tissue called the connective tissue 
stock is here where you can see the stock stock is the lining of the lining of the tissue of the stock which is called as connective tissue so this connective tissue allows the free movement of anther this connective tissue allows the free movement of anther it is nothing but the stock it is nothing but the stock which you can call this as filament okay so it is being attached here and then andrisium is the male reproductive part of the flower don't forget andrisium is the male reproductive part of the flower please underline it andrisium is the male reproductive part of the flower uh, thanks do not chat to class so now coming to gynoecium gynoecium is the fourth roll in a flower it consists of carpels it consists of carpel here you can see in this picture you can see the carpel you can see this carpel the carpel consists of stigma style and ovary okay carpel consists of stigma style and ovary so this is the fourth ball in a flower it consists of so this uh, ovary is a globular structure at the base of the carpel you can see the ovary it is a round shape globular structure ovary you can see in this picture it is a part of carpel it is a part of carpel so the stigma is the sticky end of the style it is sticky to stick the pollen grain during pollination during pollination the pollen grain is being stick to the end of the style in the gynoecium gynoecium is the female reproductive part this is the point to remember gynoecium is the female reproductive part in a flower okay underline this also carpel is composed of three parts namely ovary style and stigma so andrisium is the male reproductive part in a flower and gynoecium is the female reproductive part in a flower okay andrisium and gynoecium are known as essential roles essential parts as they take part in reproduction andrisium and gynoecium are known as please underline it essential roles as they take part in reproduction and the calyx and corolla are called as accessory roll in a flower as they help in reproduction calyx and corolla are the accessory roles in a flower as they help in reproduction a stalk like structure that hold the flower together is called as pedicel so this is the stalk like structure one thing i'll just show it to you so down pedicel you can see so it is a stalk like structure it is a uh, you can see this pedicel the pedicel bears the flower it bears the enlarged part of the flower you can see this pedicel a stalk like structure which can hold the whole flower is called as pedicel so the pedicel bear an enlarged part where all the four whorls are present it is called the receptacle it is called as underline it receptacle okay i'll just erase it now 
coming to sexual reproduction in plants. I think you're uh, clear about this sexual reproduction in plants, how the pollination takes place from male organs to female. Ma'am? Yes? Ma'am, yes. Ma your filament and stalk is same, ma'am. Filament and stalk. If you see here. Yes, ma'am. Filament is the, the thing same, which bear the anther. Filament is the thing which bear the anther. Ma'am, the yes. uh, not only the carpel, the pedicel yes. also comes on the gynosium. Yes, even uh, Neha Darshi is asking me, stalk and filament is same. Yes, stalk is also the same because it bears the anther. It bears the pollen grains. Uh, okay, ma'am. Okay. Yes. You are asking me something, Nehita? Ma'am, not only the carpels, uh, the total part of the flower comes under gynosium. No, no, no. Again, the flower has male reproductive organs and female reproductive organs. Means here, uh, the total para is continuation, Nama. So, this which comes under androsium and gynosium. You can see under the gynosium, you can see the carpel. Carpel comes under gynosium. Carpel has how many parts? Three parts. What are they? Ovary, ovary style, style stigma. stigma. Okay. And now what are the male reproductive organs which are present in androsium? And in androsium? In androsium, uh, there are... Um, the semen means, but semen will have the anther, anther, the anther, the anther, and 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 the pollen grains. Yeah, and it will semen. contain the and the uh, connective, pollen grain contains connective, the connective. male. Uh, the male organism. Uh, yeah, the main reproductive organ in the semen. Actually, ma'am, uh, uh, the androsium is consist of stamens. Androsium consists of stamens. So this, ma'am, it consists of anther, which consists of pollen grains. Pollen grains contain the male gamete. Okay? So that's why androsium is the male reproductive part of the flower. Male reproductive part is the pollen grains which are present here. You can see in this picture. Just one second. Pollen grains which are there, anther, filament, so these anther and filament, they are present on the stamen. They come under stamen. So these are the male reproductive. Ma'am, once can you explain about the ovule? Only this. Only these. These two. Okay, one second. Only this. They come under male reproductive parts. This pollen grains. Again, all these three, they are all these. They are female reproductive parts. These are the female reproductive parts. Only this, these. Ma'am, then what about the pollen, uh, the other pollen parts of grains. the typical flower? Yes. Means um, in the male reproductive parts, there are stamen and the filament and the yes. female carpel, stigma yes. style ovary. Yes. And there are some more pollen, parts, ma'am, the pollen like tube petal, also. sepal. Pollen tube also. Yes, ma'am. And there are some other also, no, ma'am, pedicel, petal, and these yes. parts come under? These parts, what they do, what the sepals, what the petals do, they give color to the plant. They give, sorry, color to the flower. If the flower is attractive, if the flower is with beautiful color, then the insects get attracted. Then they carry the pollen grains from one flower to another. Then the process of pollination takes place, isn't it? So the need of this, if there is no base, if there is no pedicel, if there is no base, how can the flower uh, get stick to the plant? So there are different functions yes. like the receptacle. They give protection to the flower. They are layers of the flower. 
only the male reproductive part and female reproductive part are the androecium and gynecium which are the part of this flower okay and is sir yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am like you have legs why you have legs what are the function of your legs because yeah. your main to walk, walk. उटरिंग Uh, corolla and uh, the different parts they give support they give they are the layers again there are layers in a flower they give support isn't it? like you wear clothes they are protective for you isn't it yes ma'am so this flower that's why the flower has so many parts and here the process of sexual again the different types of process like Uh, here in this cross pollination and self pollination what is the difference between cross pollination and self pollination in self pollination the transfer of pollen grains takes place from anther to stigma in the same flower like in this case in this flower there are the two different parts like this pollen grain here you can see this grain this yellow color pollen grain here you can see the stigma this is there is a hole in this tube yes ma'am the tube like structure which has hole here yeah ma'am i can see the hole in self pollination in self pollination this pollen grain it falls into this tube it is self pollination in some only in some flowers only in some flowers this pollen grain it falls into this hole into this tube the stigma then the process of self pollination takes place and so the pollen grain transfers from anther to stigma stigma to anther from anther. from this from this stigma from anther to stigma how can stigma to anther takes place because stigma is the tube here then so in this self pollination the transfer so in some cases in some cases only the transfer of anther to stigma takes place in the same flower okay now different flowers it doesn't takes place in different flowers but it can takes place in different flowers of the same plant okay different flowers of same plant they must be of same plant different flowers but of same kind understood like ma'am means same plant flowers are different different flowers yeah on the same plant they can be of i mean at separate distance they can be at separate distance but the same kind of flowers i mean the same color the species must be same the they might be different flowers but of same kind like mm -hmm. rose flower only they can have the pollination with the same rose flower a hibiscus cannot go and pollinate with a rose flower okay that will create a unreal flower yeah so here now coming to cross pollination is the transfer of pollen from anther to stigma in flowers with different plants but same species is known as cross pollination here the mediator is of bee a honey bee you can see a honey bee carries the pollen grains from one flower to another flower it might be in any distance the flower the other flower might be in at any distance so this is cross pollination here the bee is helping the pollen grain of one flower to go and settle down to carry out cross pollination so the bee is helping here is it clear children 
now yes, coming to swam pollination yes, and fertilization now coming to main process of how it carries how the fertilization takes place how it happens so this is a process in this process of fertilization and pollination so till now we have seen that the pollens will be uh, carried out by bees and they will be falling into the tube the tube is called as stigma and in through this tube the pollen grain it falls it comes inside this tube you can see this in this picture the pollen grain is here you can see here the pollen grain it is at the top hole of this tube it is present at the top it is sticked at the stigma it is being sticked now slowly it moves inside this pollen tube slowly it is moving here you can see it has been moved and now this sperm cell will come and meet the female gametophyte female egg now this pollen tube pollen sorry pollen grain the pollen grain separates and releases its, its what is there in the pollen grain there are sperm cells inside this pollen grain so these sperm cell they will enter into the egg they come and meet the egg they combine with the egg of the female eggs are there in the female uh, gametophyte so this is the gynoecium which is the female reproductive part so inside this female reproductive part eggs are there so this male sperm cell they come and meet the eggs of female and then another new species is formed okay now this uh, the pollen tube contains the male gametes which pass through the tube and fuse with the ovules present in the flower the female eggs the union underline this the union of the male and female gametes takes place in the ovary this is called as the inner part is called as ovary takes place in the ovary this act is known as fertilization in females in human beings in human beings the female have the womb in which the baby in the womb of female the baby will be there in the same way in the female flower it fertilizes and then this process is called as fertilization okay is it clear now yes ma'am you the video for this also so that will be clear to you ma'am also so now fertilization results in the formation of zygote now the zygote is formed okay after fertilization now male uh, sperm cell it meets with the female gametophyte which is the egg and now the male and female egg the male sperm cell it meets a female egg and now fertilization takes place it results in the formation of zygote it results in the formation of zygote the zygote divides and redivides to form a mass of cells which is called as embryo underline it which is called as embryo remember these terms fertilization results in the formation of zygote fertilization of what fertilization of which cells which cell fertilization which of the yes fertilization of mm, union of male of and female union of male and female gametes female. yes ovary union of ovary takes in ovary they form the ovary they form zygote zygote and now this zygote divides and redivides to form a mass of cell called embryo this embryo gets its nutrition from the ovary 
the embryo develops into a new plant. New plant. So usually you see the seeds which are there on the trees, on the plants. Yeah, you see the seeds. So these are the result of this fertilization. These are the results of this fertilization only. So again, these seeds, they fall down in soil. They bury deep into the soil. Again, a new plant comes out from this embryo. This embryo is nothing but seed from the plant, which we get. Okay. I'll just show you a video regarding this. So that will be clear.